Smile. <laughs> okay. Okay. Ready? Hey, welcome everyone to a new video of our Azure Stack Partner Solution video series. Again, I'm happy to be here with, uh, with Tibi from the Azure Stack Hub team to talk about different partner solutions. And Tibi, first of all, how are you today? And secondly, who am I going to speak today? Hello, Thomas. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, doing very well. Uh, the, the weather is uh, cooling down, so it's uh, better now. Uh, today, we're going to have a uh, interesting uh, partner with us. Uh, uh, CloudAssert is uh, a partner that's working with other partners to enable solutions for the customers, right? Uh, they have uh, they're, they're spanning multiple workloads, and they are uh, looking at the um, the the things from the billing side all the way to actually adding uh, RPs and uh, adding solutions on top of Azure Stack Hub. So this is a, a partner working with partners in some cases for other partners. So so you mentioned like partners and partners and partners. Isn't that somehow confusing for customers at the end, or right. just from? Uh, so this is uh, an important distinction. Um, uh, the from a customer perspective, a customer would only interact with a service provider. So for them, it would be a bit uh, a black box how the solution is actually provided. In the back, we always have a number of partners that are teaming together to provide that solution for the customer. Um, this is more like a, a SaaS-like offering, right? But of, of course, it depends on the offering but it's a, a partnership between multiple partners to offer the uh, end user, the end consumer, offer them a, a flawless experience and offer them a streamlined experience if you want. So even though it's confusing for us, uh, that's one of the, the Per, that's one of the, the points of this uh, video series, to highlight these things and to um, um, highlight what goes into these solutions in order to make it uh, seamless for the customer. Ah, okay, that sounds perfect. So for the customer, it is not really like, he doesn't really need to know about right. all what, what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, it makes it really easy for him. Okay, I'm really looking forward uh, to talking to Cloud Assert and uh, Ravi. So. Thank you very much for introducing me, and we'll talk with Ravi now. Hey, Ravi, how are you doing? Nice to meet you. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about you and about Cloud Assert? Sure. Uh, thanks, uh, Thomas and TB, for having us, and thanks for uh, doing this series uh, for bringing, you know, highlighting the partners who are working uh, day in and day out on the Azure Stack Hub. Uh, so it's a great effort on your part, guys. Um, about Cloud Assert. So we are an independent software vendor, uh, product and services company, focusing on hybrid and multi-cloud space uh, and cost management. We are a Microsoft Gold partner uh, with a very long-term partnership with Microsoft. We work very closely with uh, uh, Azure Stack Hub team, uh, several other teams to bring comprehensive solutions for the Microsoft partners. And we will talk about um, various solutions that we have for Azure Stack Hub uh, today as well. Oh, that's awesome. No, I'm really looking forward to that because I remember Cloud Assert was really early involved in like developing solutions for Azure Stack, what it was called back then, but now Azure Stack Hub. Um, so I, I obviously uh, had some very good experience uh, with you as well uh, in the past. So I'm really looking forward to that. So. Uh, Tibi mentioned to me that you're actually building solutions for partners and customers uh, and so on. Uh, and it's a little bit confusing. Like It can be a little bit confusing in the back end. Obviously, for the customer, it's very easy to use. Uh, but can you explain a little bit more about who your clients are and the customers uh, you're working with? Uh, sure, Thomas. That's a great question. Um... So we have broadly three types of customers, right? So we have customers across the globe. Uh, our solutions have been deployed, you know, uh, various data centers, uh, both enterprises, service providers, and whatnot. So in that angle, we have three broad categories of customers, enterprises, enterprise IT shops, and um, service providers and OEMs. The solutions that we have cater to all these three broad category of customers. And uh, again, today we will, uh, give an you know highlight of how the our solutions fit for these three types of customers. 
Oh, that's great. Uh, again, looking forward to that because I remember I worked with a couple of different um, service providers in the past uh, where they, obviously they worked with Cloud Assert um, for their Azure Stack Hub solution, but also for the Azure solutions and so on. Um, so my first question usually is like a little bit, why Azure Stack Hub and how does it fit in, in the overall sort of illusions you are building? Sure. Why Azure Stack Hub? So we are, like you mentioned early on, so we are a very early promoter of Azure Stack. We work with Azure Stack Hub team uh, even before it was coined. The name was coined uh, since 2014. Uh, so we believed in a strong private cloud platform that will help enterprises modernize their IT, that will motivate enterprises to kind of adopt the public cloud, but have a you know, staging area for moving their workload from the traditional you know, virtualized platforms to modern cloud platforms. So Azure Stack Hub was a fantastic, strong answer to that um, question, right? And uh, who other than Microsoft could deliver that because of the strong partner base and strong uh, footprint in the enterprises, Microsoft was you know, well positioned to have uh, providing this type of service. So we were, uh, you know, strongly uh, supported such a platform and we uh, kind of adopted and uh, started adding solutions on top of Azure Stack Hub since 2014. Uh, and this we are seeing, you know, in the last couple of years, uh, Azure Stack Hub providing that value proposition to enterprises and through service providers, again, to enterprises and whatnot. So in that aspect, we are very happy that the, you know, the industry is kind of going towards the hybrid model and Azure Stack Hub has been you know, primed to you know, take, take it forward. Okay, yeah, that's absolutely true. I, I believe that that is exactly why I think we we're very strong there. Uh, obviously, as you said, we are working very early on with customers uh, in providing them, obviously, services in their data center, but then also our hybrid portfolio, which I always like to quote uh, Jason Sanders, who brings up that we're basically saying we believe that hybrid is an end state for our customer and not just an in-between state until everything is moved uh, to the cloud, right? And I think that is that is a very important part. Uh, but now let's talk a little bit about more of your um, solutions and how you are actually providing uh, value to the customers and partners you're working with. Uh, in our previous uh, discussions, you mentioned, for example, things like multi-stamp management and billing and so on. Uh, but there, I know there's a lot more um, to talk about, right? Definitely. Uh, so Azure Stack Hub, has a strong portfolio of services and more and more services from Azure are being you know, uh, delivered through Azure Stack Hub. But for service providers and as well as enterprises, there are certain practical scenarios that are still uh, require attention. For example, tracking the utilization and monetizing that Azure Stack Hub resources across multiple stamps is an area where Cloud Assert adds value and has an out of the box solution for both enterprises and uh, service providers to track utilization and monetize those resources. Uh, Cloud Asset helps the customers to manage multiple Azure Stack hum, Hub stamps through automation, through single pane of glass experience and a consistent experience. Whether you have one stamp or multiple stamps, uh, Cloud Asset can help you manage them uh, from a single pane of glass experience. We bring multi-cloud, the hybrid cloud inside Azure Stack Hub. So your end users, the uh, customer's end users they can use Azure Stack Hub portal as a single portal to kind of you know, access all your data center uh, virtualization platforms like VMware, Open, uh, OpenStack, System Center, VMM and whatnot, as well as the public cloud like Azure, AWS um, and so on. So we bring that multi-cloud hybrid nature into Azure Stack Hub natively built inside the Azure Stack Hub portal. Uh, we also help extend the Azure Stack Hub uh, to the uh, existing services like, you know, it may be a Dell EMC Isilon. Uh, so we have solutions that help you extend Azure Stack Hub storage with this, uh, you know, industry uh, uh, leading solutions, right? We have more such solutions for, you know, backup, recovery and whatnot. Um, so we will talk a little bit more on uh, some of that today as well. Okay, that's awesome. Um, so. One of the, the solutions you just mentioned, again, we mentioned before, uh, is multi-stamp management. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about more about that, um, how that works and, and what that actually means? Sure. Uh, you know, 
we are grateful that the uh, Azure Stack Hub uh, has becoming kind of a, uh, one of the leading solutions used by most enterprises today. So because of that uh, popularity, we are seeing more enterprises are deploying more than one stamps, right? It may be for the, you know, uh, having a stamp per region or it may be for different departments or different uh, needs like dev test lab versus, you know, production grade stamps and whatnot. So enterprises are seeing themselves managing multiple Azure Stack Hub stamps. Uh, so it becomes a little complex operation wise uh, to manage multiple stamps today. So what we have added a value added solution is to enable these enterprises to manage whether you have one or 100 stamps, manage them in a very optimal way to reduce the operator cost for managing each stamps uh, from scaling up. Uh, we are uh, helping them to bring the efficiency of managing the stamps. Uh, you can have you know, a certain small set of operators manage you know, even 100 stamps. Uh, through our automation for the multi-stamp management. Uh, we bring in consistency across the stamps. So with few clicks, you can make, you know, all these hundred stamps have the same marketplace experience, same, you know, VM images, same updates and whatnot. So today, if you have to do that, you have to log into each of these Azure Stack Hub portals or, you know, log into the, to the PowerShell to manage each of these stamps independently, right, individually. So we kind of solve that problem of having a single, um, you know, consistent way of doing things through automation and whatnot. This improves our customers, you know, Microsoft partners to bring in that customer satisfaction and engage the customers in a much more consistent way. Uh, you know, if you log into a one stamp or another stamp, your, your end users are going to have the same experience, same set of marketplace images and whatnot. And we have a dedicated team working on delivering value added services on top of this. So we have monthly releases. So we enable the enterprises and the service providers get to market faster and manage multiple stamps super easily. So the return of investment is realized by the cost savings, you know, your team have to do, the enterprises IT operations team have to do to manage these stamps. So this is, again, this is great. I, I love the multi-stamp management. We have a lot of customers asking for um, multi-stamp management because they're running multiple stamps. And so this is a fantastic solution. Uh, I know you also do a billing solution. Does this also span across multiple stamps or how does that work? Great. Uh, so that's a great question, uh, Thomas. Basically, the multi-stamp uh, management solution includes billing. So we collect the data across the stamps and provide a single view of all the utilization that's going across multiple stamps. And uh, if you are a service provider, you can you know, put pricing profile rate cards on top of that and generate a single invoice for, across the stamp resources for your end users. Uh, so it, for that, um, Aravind will be able to give more uh, information on the billing Oh, hi, Arvind. Nice to meet you, too. I hope you're doing great. Uh, you're also working for Cloud Assert, so can you tell me a little bit more and explain to our customers who you are and what are you working on at Cloud Assert? Yeah, uh, thanks, Thomas. So, yeah, you know, I've been with Cloud Assert uh, as part of this journey over five years now, and uh, I'm part of the leadership team at Cloud Assert based in the Seattle region. So, talking about the Cloud Assert solution for Azure Stack Hub, focusing on you know, usage and billing, as you would imagine, you know, managing cloud spend or having visibility into what exactly uh, are my ongoing usage and costs and being able to, you know, control it within my budgets or being able to take timely actions to optimize it remains a top priority, whether you're investing in public clouds like Azure, AWS, or wherever, or even within your private clouds like Azure Stack Hub. And particularly, when it comes to Azure Stack Hub, there are two perspectives. There is the operator and service provider or you know, enterprise perspective that operates the environment. And then there's also the consumers of the service itself, right? So as a consumer, I want to be always wanting to know or provide, have visibility into what exactly are my resources? You know, am I really utilizing them, not utilizing them? How much am I, you know, what are the ongoing costs that are related to it? And then being able to, uh, you know, account for it and take timely actions as necessary to optimize, right? And then from an operator standpoint, from Azure Stack Hub, uh, for Azure Stack Hub, they need to be able to decide which services they want to offer to their tenants. And depending on who the tenants are and what kind of workloads they're going to be making available for their tenants, they need to be able to set custom pricing to determine how they want to charge for those services, depending on the context and depending on what scenarios are those going to be, and depending on the size of the instances or whatnot. Right? There are various 
factors that influence how you want to you know, price a particular service. So as an operator or an administrator of the Azure Stack instance, I need to be able to model my services and be able to set custom pricing. And say from a service provider scenario, when they have multi-tenanted Azure Stack Hub instances, I you know like in a CSP scenario, they need to be even able to set custom pricing by customer, right? Uh, so you need all that flexibility to be able to uh, you know, identify an optimal way to charge back for your services um, and then be able to also have visibility from an operator standpoint, what your end customers are consuming, what their costs are, and how does it align with, say, what you are spending as infrastructure costs for running Azure Stack Hub versus what is it that you are recouping as uh, you know, revenue from your end customers as well, right? Whereas for an inter enterprise scenario, it could be not necessarily charge back, uh, it depends on a, whether it's a large enterprise or a small enterprise, right? So they, they may just want it to, you know, track the consumption for showback purposes, or they might want to, you know, make their independent business units responsible and accountable, and they might want to have their respective units track their own budgets and then they spend against those budgets. So whichever the case may be, tracking ongoing uh, costs and spend becomes, a top, you know, is a top priority for enterprises and service providers alike. So from that standpoint, the cloud asset billing solution has been architected. In fact, this is something that we've been working with service providers and enterprises for over six years, right? You know, we have the same solution available when Windows Azure Pack, the earlier, you know, take of Azure in your data center story. Uh, we have customers across the globe using the solution. We just brought all the goodness and the learnings um, and every single nuanced configuration that a service provider would need in different parts of the world, you know, uh, built into our solution in form of various flexible pricing configurations like pay-as-you-go model or fixed fee model or targeted pricing for customers or running promotions based on seasonal offers, so on and so forth. Or just simply mirroring Azure public cloud pricing for uh, for uh, for a given market, you know, when you offer the same service by Azure Stack Up, right? just to make it easy for customers to understand the pricing. So... Uh, you know, all the bells and whistles to make our uh, solution really robust when it comes when it comes to price. One, taking the usage from Azure Stack Hub for all the services that are being provisioned, and then being able to aggregate it on a daily, monthly, um, you know, uh, grains, and then being able to provide visibility to their customers or end users on what the ongoing costs are, and then generate bills at the end of the month and send notifications if you're crossing a budget threshold or usage threshold, and so on and so forth. So this way. You know, as an end customer and uh, operator, I have ongoing visibility and I have uh, an ability to view bills, you know, generate bills, approve bills at the end of the month, or even you know, integrate with downstream, you know, centralized billing systems if you want, right? You know, there are enterprises and service providers that have centralized billing systems, so we do have ability to you know push the billing data uh, out to those systems so that they can have uh, have it done in a centralized manner. And for certain service providers that even want your end customers to be able to pay for those bills at the end of the month, right within the Azure Stack Up portal, they could, you know, uh, go and, uh, you know, pay by using a simple credit card or using use Stripe or PayPal to, you know, complete payment of those uh, bills at the end of the month. So all of these, uh, you know, end-to-end -end experience in terms of being able to have visibility, being able to view your bills, bill it down into a specific resource level, and then be able to pay your bills. Everything can be done right within the Azure Stack Up portal. That's a key value prop of our solution in that you don't have to go to yet another portal to go and, uh, you know, um, find, you know, what your ongoing costs are. It's all, um, uh, you know, integrated with the Azure Stack Up portal. Um, yeah, so I, I know from working with service providers that obviously everyone has different requirements when it comes to billing and obviously making creating offers and so on, but also that in enterprises, right? And obviously um, there needs to be some control when it comes to, for example, deploying new services. Uh, you want to allow customers to keep that control and also... Um, uh, integrate some approval steps. Uh, and I know you have some solutions there as well. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So when, when we're talking about optimizing cloud spend, uh, there needs to be also, you know, guardrails and checks and balances along the way to ensure that, you know, you're not steering off your path, right? So from that standpoint, we provide, you know, a few ways to enable that, you know, at different points in this life cycle, starting from the provisioning process of a resource. You know, uh, our weekend resource provider enables a seamless end-tier approval workflow. So wherein when you initiate provisioning of a resource, and it can go to a, say, in, in the enterprise scenario, a developer or an employee provisions a resource. It can go to the business unit's heads approval from a group-specific budget 
approval step, right? And then they approve it. And then it could go to probably a second level of approval to the IT admin who makes sure that there's enough quota, enough capacity available in the system to accommodate that provisioning request. And then they approve that, after which the automated process kicks in to go about provisioning the resource itself. That's one level of you know, control that we can enable through the provisioning during the provisioning process. Now, post the provisioning process, you know, you want to you know see the ongoing costs and then you want to generate bills, right? Particularly for service providers. You know, when you generate the bills automatically, service providers always want to be able to review the automatically generated invoice and then be able to add any custom items that they see fit, right? That's uh, unique or they want to add a custom discount for whatever reasons. They can do all of that and then explicitly approve the invoice at that point in time so that it is then made available for the tenants or uh, the end users to be able to view it, right? Or for that matter, it could, upon approval, it could be automatically sent to a downstream centralized billing system, which then can then you know generate the invoice, uh, unified invoice, right? And Beyond this, when it comes to invoice and bill generation itself, there's a lot of customizability that we enable in our solution. You know, be it supporting multiple currencies or for you know multiple languages. You know, kind of you know localizing the invoice itself into language uh, that the end customer would prefer. Right? We enable all of that, and then you also can define what's the layout of the invoice, what specific information you want to provide there and whatnot. And again, all of this can be customized at a customer level if you want, right? So, because there's always going to be different needs for different markets and different countries and different customers. So there's a lot of, you know, customizability and configurability that's enabled when it comes to generating invoices as well. No, that sounds pretty cool. Uh, again, it's like, uh, again, a lot of companies and service providers, they need a lot of control when it comes to these things. And obviously this, this is a great solution um, to do that. So I want to big switch back to Ravi to talk a little bit about the actual like implementations, like all of these great solutions happening. Sure. Uh, thanks, Thomas. So uh, the solutions that we have Azure Stack are uh, very unique in a in a way that they are built as a native resource provider with uh, integrated UI experience within the Azure Stack Hub portal. Um, so outside of Microsoft, we are one of uh, one of the couple of um, Microsoft partners who are able to do that because um, it's it's really uh, it takes a lot of time to implement that. We took the time to do that because it brings tremendous value to the customers by being natively integrated within the Azure Stack platform, right? So uh, how this helps customers is by having a single portal and a consistent experience for their end users to go for leveraging the awesome services in Azure Stack Hub, as well as look at their ongoing cost uh, from within the Azure Stack portal through cloud assets billing solution to do other operations across multiple clouds and the data center uh, virtualization platforms from a single portal. So we are able to do that because of the way we uh, implemented the solution within Azure Stack Hub. Uh, like I said, uh, it took quite a bit of time for us to work with the Microsoft team, uh, but it is, uh, you know, helping our customers. So in uh, in way uh, to to fulfill the promise of Azure Stack Hub being the consistent experience across Azure and Azure Stack. So we kind of extrapolated that to bring the same experience for billing, monetization, as well as to manage the enterprises, other data center resources like VMware, OpenStack, System Center, uh, and public clouds like AWS, Azure, and whatnot. Oh, that's pretty cool. Again, I like that there is such an integrated part. Um, now, we briefly talked about your different customers and partners you have, like um, service providers, um, enterprises, and OEMs. Can you talk a little bit about like the differences and explain a little bit more how you work with them and how you help them and how you build your solutions with and for them? Sure, definitely, Thomas. Um, let me first uh, start with the enterprises, how uh, our solutions help uh, you know, enterprises to leverage and maximize the Azure Stack. So like I said uh, just before, we bring in that consistency right, across one stamp or multiple stamps and across multiple clouds and data center uh, through Azure Stack. So for the enterprises, it becomes very easy to have the centralized governance and control through Azure Stack for all their assets across the clouds. So that's a very big value prop for the enterprise IT to be able to have an one place to control uh, and govern and at the same time provide the flexibility of you know, modern cloud uh, you know, services uh, for their end users. Uh, we bring in tracking the usage and cost out of the box for Azure Stack so that the enterprises can track 
utilization of uh, the resources by business units, by departments, teams, and so on through Azure Stack Hub uh, with the Cloud Asset Billing Solution. We bring in the ability to generate invoices, to do the showback or chargeback for the uh, you know uh, the down level business units or down level customers. If you are a reseller and service provider and whatnot, we bring in this automation and self service nature through the Cloud Asset B Connect solution. So the tasks that would have been taking a lot of time through the existing support uh, you know ticketing system, we uh, through we connect we enable that to be automated. Uh, we enable the admins to automate any of these support tasks through a wizard driven uh, experience so that they can extend the functionality. If they have a PowerShell script, they can automate and get the inputs from the end users to the UI and uh, all the support tasks can be automated. And in fact, we have seen this happening with one of our uh, major, uh, you know, uh, almost top five uh, healthcare provider. So they kind of uh, did this in a mega scale. So they took our weekend solution and then they kind of automated all their support tasks through this uh, automation flexibility and extensibility that we have. And that has helped them tremendously reduce the time for uh, doing some of these tasks as well as bring in that customer end user satisfaction for their uh, customers. And all the solutions that we have, uh, billing, we connect for the Azure Stack Hub resource providers are built with the enterprise business critical needs in mind uh, with built-in, uh, you know, uh, BCDR, business continuity, backups, as well as each of the solutions can scale independently to meet the, uh, you know, business demands. So we bring in all of this out of the box so the enterprises don't have to worry about this and maximize the Azure Stack Hub value prop for their end users. For the service providers and OEM, I would like uh, Aravind to uh, talk about that. Um, talking about service providers, OEMs, you know, uh, from a service provider standpoint, majority of the service providers that uh, start offering Azure Stack Hub as a service, one of the first things that they worry about in terms of taking the solution to the market is figuring out a way to offer Azure Stack Hub services uh, on a consumption basis because there's a lack of a built-in solution to track usage and billing within Azure Stack Hub out of the box. And that's where, uh, you know, Cloud Asset comes in in that we provide an integrated solution within the Azure Stack Hub portals uh, just like Azure Public Cloud, you can go click on billing uh, menu and then be able to see the ongoing cost and uh, you know buy subscription and be able to drill it down to the specific resource level in terms of what the consumption is for the given billing period and the associated cost and see unified bills at the end of the month and be able to pay for it and so on and so forth. So, in fact, like for one of uh, our customers in in Europe, you know, who has been a service provider for three decades, you know, when they started offering Azure Stack Hub as a service and they also became a CSP partner of Microsoft, you know, they have this challenge of you know, finding a way to offer Azure Stack Hub as a consumption-based service for their end customers. Also, you know, they wanted an integrated experience where they could make the CSP offerings available on a self-service basis as well. So the Cloud Asset Billing solution for Azure Stack Hub also has a CSP uh, self-service add-on wherein you can not only track ongoing, you know, usage and uh, costs for Azure Stack Hub services, but also provide a marketplace catalog experience for the CSP offerings where somebody can go and look at a you know, search for Office 65 or Azure or any of the offers that Microsoft offers via the CSP program and be able to purchase them on a single click and then manage the related licenses and assign it to their users within their organization and so on and so forth. So instead of having to hop onto different portals to consume different services and then be able to track the you know, uh, consumption of those resources and charge back the customers for those respective services in respect to portals, you're bringing all of this in a single pane of glass that makes it easier for operators and end customers alike to uh, you know have a central place to track everything that they want and manage all the resources that they are you know transacting with this particular service product partner and then be able to get a unified bill including Azure Stack services as well as you know CSP services at the end of the month, right? So that was a you know key um, uh, you know win for uh, for one of our customers that we enabled in Europe and. And to add to that, they also had these, uh, like I mentioned earlier, they also had these unique requirements because then being part of Europe, they had local regional needs in terms of customizing invoices in a certain way, having regional configurations in the way the invoice looks and feels, the language in which it has to be customized. So we enabled all of that, right? So, and that was, you know, basically all that enabled was from a service provider standpoint, it reduces the time to market their Azure Stack Hub as a service because they don't have to go and worry about, hey, do I have to write something on my own to monetize Azure Stack Hub, right? 
they just install a resource provider and they can just start offering Azure Stack Up as a service on a consumption basis. And secondly, they're also able to easily you know, measure the return on investment when it, when it comes to CSP services, right? Because Microsoft is going to charge them for the CSP program, you know, in terms of what they're you know, purchasing on behalf of their customers. And the service providers are in turn able to set custom pricing for their own customers, be it Azure Stack Up services or you know, CSP services. And then they're able to compare what their ongoing costs are in terms of you know, offering these services. And then what is the ongoing revenue that they're able to you know, gain from their end customers by offering these services and then measure that and you know, uh, calculate their margins and uh, return on investment, right? So those are key wins. And from end customer standpoint, obviously, as I said, managing cloud spend is a key priority for them. So providing that visibility to ongoing costs and uh, enables you know, end customer trust and satisfaction um, as well as you know, controlling it within their budgets. So this is uh, kind of the story from a service provider standpoint. When we talk about you know, OEMs, um, you know, with OEMs, basically we're trying to, you know, help them, uh, you know, strike partnerships with them to help them, you know, offer an integrated solution, right? Because when you, when you take, say, Dell, for example, they have, you know, they are an approved vendor for offering Azure Stack Up as an appliance, now as an hardware partner, right? At the same time, you know, Azure Stack Up itself, you know, has certain limitations in terms of offering extended storage beyond what is available out of the box. You know, be, you know, for example, file share uh, is not available as a service, uh, or file service is not available within Azure Stack Up today, like it is available in Azure Public Cloud. Whereas OEMs like Dell offer, you know, scale out NAS solutions like Isilon, which can easily be used as an external storage to scale out the available storage within Azure Stack Up. And similarly, you know, there is no native backup and disaster recovery solution for tenant workloads in Azure Stack Up. Of course, you could look at Azure Backup as a service, but for sovereignty reasons, when customers do not want to, you know, even back up their resources to Azure Public Cloud, they need a solution that can, you know, back it up to a backup target within the data center, right? And that's where, again, uh, Dell's solution like Data Domain, as an example, is a great uh, choice for using as a backup target. Now, how do you offer these solutions like Isilon, Data Domain, as an integrated service or solution within Azure Stack Up? There isn't a way to do that today, and that's where we come in. You know, with our weekend resource provider, you know, which is built for extensibility and, you know, integrability with all these third-party services, we're able to easily light up integrations with solutions like Data Domain or you know Isilon, et cetera, and offer it as a native service within the Azure Stack Up portal. You know, in a matter of weeks, right? Not months. And that thereby, when OEMs go and sell Azure Stack Up to their customers, they don't have to sell you know Azure Stack Up separately and sell Data Domain separately or Isilon separately. They can you know package it all as a single offering, as a value-added offering, and then sell it to their customers. And that's something that we're enabling for you know OEMs. And in, in, as as an extension to that. We also, you know, uh, are able to offer private labeled solutions when they want to offer this as an integrated solution. Obviously, they don't want to have, you know, different names in different places. So they want to offer it all, say, as a, you know, my own OEM brand, right? And we enable doing that as well, you know, with our weaknet resource provider. And along the way, you know, we are also able to share with the OEMs our Azure Stack Hub expertise as well. As we work with various vendors, various customers around the globe, we are always able to share our expertise in terms of how we can materialize integration of all these you know, external services into Azure Stack Hub and provide a seamless, you know, user experience. So when we build these experiences for the OEMs, we work jointly with them in, you know, understanding these scenarios and then saying, you know, hey, these would be the kind of scenarios that you'd want to materialize in the Azure Stack Administrator portal. And these are the scenarios you want to materialize on the tenant portal. And then we come up with a, you know, solution that we then go on and build out, right? So, uh, I mean, the solutions that we currently have in the market uh, for, you know, with, that we work with OEMs, are, for example, Isilon integration, right? Wherein, uh, as, an, as a tenant, if I want to be able to, you know, store, you know, increase the storage for a given Azure Stack VM, and I want to store it, say, in an external NAS storage like Isilon, I don't want to go and into a different portal and then create a share in Isilon and manually mount it to an Azure Stack Up VM as a drive. Rather, right within the Azure Stack Up portal, I'm able to go and create a share in Isilon and then be able to easily mount it as a, an additional uh, storage for the VM. So that's something that we enabled for, uh, Dell EMC Isilon. And similarly, we enabled an integration with data domain as well for Dell, wherein you could easily uh, you know, configure shares in our uh, storage uh, units in data domain to act as the backup target, so that then you can use a backup solution to uh, easily find a point to the backup target and then backup your resources in Azure Stack Up. So these are you know, some of the things that we're working with OEMs, and we're always looking for new opportunities with various OEMs. So other OEMs that have uh, similar such needs and similar such services, and they're looking for you know integrating with Azure Stack Hub as a native solution. You know you should look at Cloudacid as the go-to partner to enable that. 
No, that's that's really great. I really like um, the the solutions you offer to service provider, enterprises, OEMs, all the way to actually the end users, right, of the product. No, that's fantastic. Um, so obviously we talked, and I want to ask now if like the viewers want to know more, if they want to know more, where should they go? Where can they find more about Cloud Assert? Yeah. So thanks for asking that question, Thomas. You know, there are several avenues available for customers, you know, to get to know about Cloud Assert solutions, right? So cloudassert.com website is a great starting point. It has information about all our solutions and products. That, and then there's, uh, you know, links to go about requesting a demo or requesting price quote and so on and so forth. So that's a great way to start. And then there are also, you know, regional partners that we work with. Uh, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, large enterprises or even small, uh, you know, enterprises in certain regions, they have a local SI partner that they trust and they want to work with them to you know, determine which solutions are best for them and then purchase them. So we have such regional partners as well in various regions that represent our solutions in those markets. So talking to your regional partner is also a great way to getting to know about our solutions and see how it could be of help uh, for your specific scenarios, right? And then we also work pretty closely with the Microsoft GBB team, the field, field team at Microsoft, who are pretty much advocates of Microsoft Azure Stack Hub and helping customers understand the value of what Azure Stack is and how it is relevant to their needs. And they are also made aware of cloud search solutions and the scenarios we can enable as a partner. So whenever they come across as a scenario, you know that Azure Stack Hub may not fulfill out of the box, but it's a gap that we can come in and address as a custom solution or can be addressed with our existing product. They always loop us in and then bring us to the table for such conversations with the customer. So that's another gateway to engage with us. And we also work closely with you know, MVPs and uh, influencers like uh, you know, Thomas himself or MVPs in, across the globe, you know, getting to uh, familiarize our solutions so that when they come across you know, needs for end customers that have to be addressed, they can you know, bring us in. Um, beyond this, we also have, uh, you know, as we talked about OEMs, we also share good relationships with OEMs. So the OEMs are also made aware of about our solutions. So when they go and sell Azure Stack Hub, they again have an opportunity to see, you know, if our solutions could be a fit to address some of the needs and gaps of the customers have. So there are several channels as a result, and you know, um, you could contact, you know, who is the appropriate, you know, person for a given context, and then reach out to us, right? So there's that's pretty easy. Just a hop or two away in the worst case to get through and uh, you know help you out. Perfect. No, thank you very much. Uh, again, we will put all the links. Uh, you can connect to Cloud Assert down in the description of this video. Um, if you have more questions, just reach out to us uh, or to Cloud Assert directly. I want to really thank you, Ravi and Arvin, for being in this uh, video. Uh, really great solutions we see here. Uh, and also thank you to Tibby for being and connect here and connecting me with Cloud Assert. So thank you very much. And for the viewers, thank you for watching. Hopefully see you in the next one. Thanks. Thank you everyone. Thanks for having